Oh, hey, what's up everyone? One Tech Traveler checking in here in Sapporo, Hokkaido, Japan. I'm currently chilling on a nice sunny day, but also lots of snow still all around me in Nakajima Park. I'm gonna turn it around so that you can see it. So, yep, this is the view in front of me. I'm currently just chilling on a bench, but it's peaceful and quiet. And I wanted to help those who are looking to purchase a camera or a lens in Japan whilst traveling uh, to give you my personal experience of getting the Sony a7 III. If you haven't yet seen my unboxing first look and comparisons between the Sony a7 and the a7 III, then do go ahead and subscribe to my channel and check out those videos. The Sony a7 III has only just come out one week ago, yet as soon as it went on sale, you're already able to buy at a massive discount if you are traveling here in Japan. In Japan, it's already released considering this is Sony's home territory and it'll be out in the UK and the US uh, sometime in April. So you want to go ahead and see what the price is in pounds and in dollars first. Next thing to do is go out and check out the biggest electronic store websites here in Japan, which is Big Camera and Yodabashi. And I'll put the links down below so you can quickly go and do that for the models you're thinking of buying. And then you can do a rough estimation on Google by seeing what the price difference is. If you already have some price difference, then it may be worth considering. Now what really gets interesting is you've got quite a few incentives as a traveler visiting Japan to purchase some electronics here. Whilst you have the two giants, Big Camera and Yodabashi, uh, I went through Big Camera uh, at JR Sapporo Station. It's a very big store, so if you are visiting around Hokkaido Sapporo, then definitely go ahead and check that out. But there's also the Sony store, uh, just not far from it as well. The Sony store is great if you are looking to pick up a Sony camera or get into the ecosystem because they pretty much have the whole range of lenses, accessories for your cameras, so great for picking up a little bits. And also if you want a much nicer experience of checking out the Sony A9, the A7 Mark, uh, A7R Mark III or the new A7 III. But I would definitely suggest to go through Big Camera pretty much for two reasons. So right off the bat, you get 8% tax free uh, through them and it's a straightforward process that's done at the time of sale so some places might be a bit more inconvenient and there'll be a lot of places that will do that will also offer the 8% uh, but a big camera it was a uh, very straightforward easy um, so do make sure you have your passport that's the most important part to make sure you are eligible for it they do quote the tax inclusive and the tax excluded price so you can see and then do a rough conversion so from the UK for example the A7 Mark III is £2,000 uh, which is a lot of money but it's still a stellar camera for what it's capable of and also still half or slightly less than half for comparing the A9 and A7R Mark III but where you're able to get more for your money is that big camera do an offer where if you are purchasing through a card payments and they include a whole range of union pay but also Visa and I think MasterCard um, then you get an additional 5% off just pretty much by paying through your card Right off the bat, when the A7 Mark III suddenly came out, then you're able to get 13% off from the tax and the card payment, and that suddenly makes it a lot more lucrative, more attractive, and more camera for your money. So when you are taking off the 8% off, then that comes to about £1,600, but when you add the additional 5% off, then it came over to just over £1,500. So it's already £500 cheaper um, than being in the UK, and that's more of a that's more of an exception rather than a rule of thumb. You want to check it if you're euros, you're in US dollars, or you're in Hong Kong dollars. And, you know, I have it right here uh, so that you can, you can see that. Awesome. You can, if you are looking to purchase it, then you do make a lot of good savings on it and gives you more capacity if you want to buy an additional lens. You can also buy the body only or with the standard 24-70mm lens, but I already had that one with my A7, so I just went for the body. Next thing is with Sony, they actually have two different variants. One is the domestic model and one is the overseas model. So like you can expect, the domestic one is pretty much a Japanese model. And what that means is all of the menu systems and instructions are in Japanese and the warranty is only applicable in Japan. Um, so whilst you can buy it, it's a little bit cheaper, uh, around 1,400, uh, you are looking at just about 80 pounds, 100 pounds difference um, to getting the international model, the overseas model. Uh, that includes, I believe, around 52, and the warranty is also international. So for those who are traveling, I definitely recommend the overseas, so pretty much because it's still a small price difference. You're covered uh, in many countries, and again, I'll link you, I'll show you all the regions uh, where you are covered warranty-wise in the description. And uh, it's still going to be a sizable uh, difference, particularly from the UK, of getting 
the latest camera cheaper. One thing to note is when you do purchase it with your passport, uh, they will note down the serial number and get your warranty set up at the time of purchase, so it's one year from then. They also staple a customs declaration form onto your passport, uh, and you want to keep it stapled until the time of departure. Um, after that, you can actually remove it. it. So all that piece of paper stapled to your passport means is that you're, you still have it with you, it's for your own personal use and you're not planning to sell it uh, anywhere in Japan and it's to check that you actually have it with you when you are leaving. You can also have it shipped and you just need to notify them or provide some proof of your shipment to make sure that you aren't hit with the tax as well. As soon as you've left it says there's in the piece of paper that you can uh, take it off after. So that was my experience if you're looking to buy a camera here in Japan. Lenses, uh, again, it's pretty much the same story. You want to double check the pricing of your local market, but you also find that Sony offer some models that aren't actually available uh, locally, like in the UK, quite a few of the accessories, uh, like the LCD monitors, uh, some of their microphones that you can attach on the hot shoe uh, aren't available there anymore. So um, it's definitely worth considering that. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. It. If you have any questions or comments whilst I'm here in Japan that I can definitely check out for you, then feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks a lot for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, keep being awesome. Peace.